The Monk and the River Stone It was early morning when Kansho set out walking along the winding forest path. Dew still clung to the green leaves and branches overhead. Birdsong echoed gently through the misty air. Kansho pulled the folds of his robe tighter and continued steadily along the worn earthen trail. After some time, the path led out of the forest into open countryside. Vibrant green rice fields rippled in the distance. The rising sun peeked through dissipating clouds, casting golden rays of light over the pastoral landscape. Kansho eventually approached a quaint farming village nestled in a small valley. He could see villagers beginning their day's work, carrying tools towards the fields, feeding animals, preparing meals over smoldering fires. The monk made his way between the thatched roof homes towards the sound of running water. There near the edge of the village sat an old stone footbridge crossing a wide stream. Kansho paused for a moment and then sat down beneath a tree near the bank. He placed his woven pack on the ground next to him and breathed deeply. The murmuring water glided steadily beneath the bridge supports. It was a peaceful spot to rest for a time. Kansho had been traveling for many days on pilgrimage between temples. Assisting where he could and meditating alone in the wilderness when possible. But recently he had been feeling restless and ill at ease within himself. No matter how much he tried to focus during sitting sessions, his mind felt constantly distracted and flooded with worries. He hoped this village by the water could provide a respite. As he sat gazing at the stream, Kensho spotted movement out of the corner of his eye. A young boy, no more than eight years old, came wandering along the bank. He carried a cloth sack slung over his shoulder that appeared full of river stones. The boy made his way out onto the bridge and plopped down cross-legged near one of the rails. He reached into his sack and started sorting through the stones. Kansho watched curiously as the boy examined each stone, turning it over in his hands before setting some aside in a pile and putting others back in the sack. The rejected ones were seemingly no different in size or shape. But the boy clearly had some criteria in mind as he focused intently on his task. After some time, the boy had whittled his collection down to just three stones. He smiled proudly and glanced up, noticing Kansho nearby for the first time. The monk bowed his head in greeting. Good morning young man, said Kansho. I see you have some interesting stones there. May I ask what you plan to do with them? The boy stood up eagerly and came over to where Kensho was sitting. Good morning sir. I'm collecting special stones to decorate my mother's garden with. She loves sitting near the plum tree in the mornings, and I want to surprise her. Kensho smiled. How kind of you. And how do you know which stones are the special ones? I check if they are smooth and don't have any cracks or marks. And then I just have a feeling inside when I pick up one that it is a good one, like it is happy to come home with me. The boy cradled the three chosen stones gently, looking pleased with his selections. You have keen senses my young friend. I hope your mother appreciates the gift. Kansho patted the boy's shoulder affectionately. Thank you. I should probably head back soon to help carry water from the well. Enjoy your rest by the stream sir. The boy waved and headed back across the bridge, clutching his prized stones. Kansho waved in return, intrigued by the simple interaction. He sat reflecting on stones, streams, and mother's gardens. Later that day, after obtaining food and shelter in the village, Kansho returned to sit by the flowing stream. The sun was sinking low behind the hills and deep shadows spread over the valley. Kansho closed his eyes and tried to meditate, following his breath. But his mind still felt unsettled. After some frustrated attempts, he opened his eyes with a sigh. The stream now appeared dark. Even ominous in the fading light. Just then, Kancho's eyes landed on a single stone lying on the bank, one the boy must have overlooked earlier. It was flat and smooth like the others but had a unique turquoise hue mixed in with the gray. On impulse, Kensho reached over and picked it up. 
moving closer to the water's edge, he peered at it in his palm. There seemed to be a sense of calm and steadiness emanating from the stone's cool surface. Kansho hesitated briefly and then placed the small turquoise stone carefully into the moving water before him. He watched closely as the stream gradually carried it off into the distance. Something about seeing the stone's solid stillness contrasted with the ever-changing flow around it resonated within Kansho. He suddenly felt lighter. Like the stream had washed away some unseen burden he'd been carrying. From then on, each time his meditations were uneasy and distracted, Kensho would return to sit by the stream. Whenever turbulent thoughts or strong emotions arose, he learned to pause and visualize the little turquoise stone, letting go and allowing whatever arose to simply pass by like the flowing water around the rock. This always restored a sense of inner quiet and balance. Years later, when Kensho became head abbot of his own temple, he made sure to create a peaceful rock garden with a tranquil pond that would inspire future generations. The memory of the boy and his stones, and that moment by the village stream, remained with Kansho as an enduring reminder of the wisdom within simplicity. Whenever he needed to recollect his balance, he would sit for a time and listen mindfully to the sound of flowing water. 